Welcome to Plant-Based Kidney Health. I'm Michelle Krosmer here with Dr. Sean Hashmi, and today we're taking it back to the basics of kidney disease. Dr. Hashmi, can you explain the different stages of chronic kidney disease? The best way to understand the stages of kidney disease is to essentially break them into two categories. One category is what we call the early stages. Early stages are typically stages one through three. Late stages makes it easy to remember early and late. Late stages are stages four and five. So now let's talk a little bit about the early stages so you guys have the basics. Stage one, and by the way, the way you define these stages is also important to understand. So we'll talk about that. Stage one is where your kidney function is above 90 mils per minute. So in other words, your GFR is greater than 90. So a lot of people walking around have GFRs higher than that. So does that mean they all have stage one? The answer is no. You are looking for not just the GFR, but also signs of kidney damage, which is protein in the urine. So in other words, GFR is greater than 90 and protein in the urine. Stage two, still an early stage. It's considered mild chronic kidney disease. So GFR is about 60 to 89.9. So 60 to 89 mils per minute. The stuff is the same as CKD stage one, where you're really not going to have any symptoms come out of either one, stage one or stage two. You may have protein in the urine. So in other words, we are looking for signs of kidney damage. So you would see protein in the urine. Now, stage three, we divide it into two pieces stage 3A and stage 3B. The only reason we do that is because there's a distinction when you get to stage 3B in that the symptoms start to get worse. So stage 3A is considered 45 to 59 mils per minute on your kidney function, and stage 3B is 30 to 44. The thing that becomes important in stage 3 especially stage 3B, is that the waste products that your kidneys normally filter are starting to build up. So for example, people start to notice that they are having higher blood pressures in stage 3, specifically in stage 3B. You may also notice that you're starting to have swelling. Typically, the swelling starts in your legs and feet, but it can also go to your hands in some cases when it's significantly worse. And systemic symptoms or how you feel, some people already at stage three start to notice that they're getting more and more tired. So those are all the early stages. Now let's get into the late stages. So for example, stage four. Stage four is a kidney function 15 to 29. But the thing that matters here is this is where not only are you going to start to see the high blood pressure, you're also going to start to see bone disease occurring. So there's issues with bone remodeling. We know that chronic kidney disease is closely linked to heart disease. And so you will start to see that there's also heart disease with it. And the thing that matters is, is those symptoms of swelling, fatigue, all of those things can start to get significantly worse. So at stage four, you absolutely want to see your nephrologist. Usually at stage 3B is where most areas will say, you got to see a kidney doctor. If you are in a place where you can see them sooner, that's always better. But either way, if you're at stage 3B or 4, absolutely. The sooner you see a kidney specialist, the better off you're going to be because we can work with a team. So our team will be, we have our renal dietitians, we have our social workers, we have an entire team to be able to work with you. So the sooner you come to us and work with our team, the better the odds of slowing everything down. And finally, stage five, which is a kidney function of less than 15 on the GFR, so less than 15 mils per minute. The idea there is, is that pretty much your kidneys have either already stopped or they're close to stopping and the waste products are building up. This is where when you look at the episodes with Michelle and I on potassium, on phosphorus, on metabolic acidosis, all of those things are absolutely critical. And so 
as you think about these five stages, you want to have a very good idea of what are the things that are happening. As you progress into the kidney disease, you're going to have what we call essentially protein energy malnutrition. So you're going to see that because of the fact that you're building more acid in the body, you're also breaking down muscle. So you have loss of lean body mass. You're getting more tired because you're starting to have weakness. And it's all because of the fact that there's more acid that's building up inside the blood. You also see that there can be things like not just swelling in the feet and working its way to the hands, but it can end up in the lungs. And general symptoms, whether that's fatigue or tiredness, you can't exercise as much. But the stuff that people don't notice is the impact on the brain. So people will have issues with remembering things, memory issues. Common colds or, or normal illnesses become higher and higher. And this is why as you progress down the stages, you have to understand that as those stages are getting worse, all of these symptoms can get worse. And some of the most serious symptoms as stage five can be things like inflammation around the heart. We call that pericarditis, which can be very severe because there can be fluid that can get trapped between the lining of the heart and the heart itself, and that's called a tamponade, and it's a life-threatening thing. We can have people where they're completely confused, and that's called encephalopathy. Of course, skin issues are very common. People say, look, I can't stop itching. And the reason is, is because of the buildup of those toxic products. And sleep, as much as we talk about sleep, as you progress in those kidney diseases, the quality of sleep starts to get worse. In men, they may also notice um, erectile dysfunction. In men and women, there's decreased libido, there's decreased desire for those things. And of course, from a blood level, you start to see issues happening where your blood doesn't clot as well, where the platelets don't work as well. So in terms of these stages of CKD, just because you have a stage and you're not having symptoms, it doesn't mean that inside your body, there isn't stuff happening. Yeah. And I think that's the hard part with kidney disease is like you said, a lot of these symptoms aren't happening until <clears throat> that stage four or five or late stage. So, or that's why even if you don't have the symptoms, it's still something that's so important to make these diet and lifestyle changes that we talk about. Um, so Dr. Hashmi, how long can someone stay in one of these stages of kidney disease, um, whether they make, you know, diet, lifestyle, wow. medication changes or not? This is a really, really tough question because it is so individualized. But what we do know is that if you do the diet and if you do the lifestyle with this stuff, in other words, you cut out the smoking, you're sleeping, you're moving more, you're eating a predominantly plant-based diet and not a processed one, but a predominantly unprocessed. In other words, the more whole foods you can do, the better. So a predominantly whole food diet. If you're doing those things and you've cut out the alcohol and all that stuff, you can actually halt or even go backwards in terms of improving the function. So in other words, sometimes we see that the GFR doesn't actually reflect the ability of the kidneys. It's just that there may be some other issues going on. You're spilling too much protein, so you're dehydrated and so forth. But as you start to fix those things, as you bring the weight to a healthy level, you will see that the GFR improves. Now, the part that becomes important is what if you're not doing anything? If you're not doing anything, what you want to understand is that absolutely your risk of dying sooner increases. But even then, what you want to understand is if you have chronic kidney disease, absolutely it will decrease your life expectancy. Whether you're 60 or whether you're 19 or 18 years old, you have to know this. And because it's so hard to give you a number, because it depends on how much protein you're spilling, whether you're diabetic or not, whether you're having suffering from obesity or not, what's your blood pressure control like. So that makes it tricky. But overall, life expectancy will decrease. But if you do the right stuff, there's a very good chance you can stop the disease where it's at right now. 
Yeah. And I think that's just so important to emphasize. And one of the things when talking about the blood work and the GFR and what stage that puts you in that I think is, is hard is that a lot of blood work that comes back on the report, it doesn't flag as being abnormal unless the GFR is less than 60. And at that point, someone's already in stage three, moderate kidney disease. And so I guess, what are your thoughts on that? Like, why are, why is it not being flagged earlier and just prompting like, Hey, let's check for protein in the urine or other signs of kidney damage. So people can make these changes earlier on to even, um, be more likely to slow or prevent that progression. I think this is, this is always the tough question is when, when we look at population-based data, there's something where you have to understand how many tests, how many false positives are you doing? What's the harm? in testing everybody for everything happens. So unfortunately, you know, most people only go to their doctor when something is wrong. They don't go just to get a regular checkup. They're not going every year and saying, hey, let me just, you know, check my blood test to make sure everything's working okay. A lot of those things have changed. People aren't doing that anymore. And so when we see patients and they come to us and they say, doc, I don't feel right. Now we capture it. That's a whole step later. And this is where, once again, you know, on this channel, our goal has been to educate people without telling them, oh, my God, the sky is falling because the sky is not falling. But at the same time, kidney disease isn't talked about enough and we should be talking more. Yeah. And how many times, so let's say someone does, whether it's random where they go every year and they get their blood work done um, and their GFR it's always been what they thought was normal. And all of a sudden it's, let's just say 65. Um, how many mm-hmm. times, like, is that say, okay, you have stage two kidney disease or how many times does their GFR have to be decreased to a certain amount before they would get a diagnosis of chronic kidney disease? Well, in general, the rule of thumb is anytime you have one value repeat it. And so if you repeat the value and you get the same thing. So if, you know, somebody is 60 to 90, we also need to look for kidney damage to reinforce that. And so, you know, you, you repeat it, the numbers are the same. Then the next step is, is, you know, what's their urine studies like? Do they have protein in the urine? What's their ultrasound like of the kidneys? Does it look like the kidneys have already shrunken? Do they have issues with comorbidities, blood pressure, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, obesity? All of those things as diseases become important to understand so that we can act on all of those secondary issues. But in general, one lab value is never enough. You always have to repeat it, always. Yeah. And one last thing that I want to just have you reemphasize, because you you touched on it, but this is a a big question we always get asked when thinking of the stages of kidney disease. So can someone go backwards? Can you go from being in the stage four category to stage three or stage three to stage two? So, you know, this is, this is a, a, a numbers game. In other words, if people get so obsessed about these things, and I know certain people in certain communities are like, oh, I, I cured this person of their kidney disease. Well, no, you didn't. You didn't. So what happens with kidneys is when you're born, you're born with a million cells in each kidney, and the only thing that happens is they die. So what's left, let's say you're down to 600,000 cells, what's left is actually going to take on the function of everything else. So we're not measuring kidney function. That's an illusion. We are basically getting an estimate of kidney function by seeing how much creatinine is left in the blood. That's it. So in other words, there are so many ways to cheat the system. You could drink a bunch of water before you do the blood test and it looks like your GFR went up. If you lose a bunch of weight, you also lose muscle, you're producing less creatinine, so your GFR looks better. So my question then is, well, you went from stage four to stage two. That doesn't mean your dietitian, your nephrologist, your guru, whoever you went to did something amazing. It just means that now you're producing less creatinine and that's what we're measuring. So I think it's really important that the goal is not to go backwards or forwards. The goal is, is can we improve the things that are going to kill you faster? The protein in the urine, the blood pressure, the blood sugars, the weight, all of those basic things, the lipids, and of course, any bad habits, smoking, drinking, alcohol. If we do those, 
then that's a better way to answer that question than to get stuck on trying to go backwards. Because, you know, I had a, a conference um, recently that I hosted where one of our speakers was talking about how they've taken people back. And the problem is, is it, it takes away from the idea because when you put somebody on the life-saving drugs, the ACE inhibitors, the ARBs, the aldosterone antagonists, um, the SGLT2 inhibitors, the GLP-1 agonists, when we do that, the kidney function actually looks worse. In fact, how we know the drugs are working is if you see a decline in the GFR. So very tricky question to answer because Absolutely. If it's just a number to make better, yeah, we can make your number look better. Yeah. And that's where symptoms are so important too. I've worked with people who, and seen people who have a GFR of 30 and they're not doing anything to help themselves and feel like crap. And I've had clients, you know, 10 to 15 that are doing everything and they feel great. And you would look at them and never know that they have, you know, go between stage four and five kidney disease. So there's a lot that goes into it and it's really easy to get hooked up just on that one number. So thank you, Dr. Hashmi for answering all of these questions. We hope that helps you guys and we'll see you next time.